Does changing the speed that you run a pot still at, changing the amount of energy that you're putting into the pot, does that actually have any effect on the distillate? And if it does, how can we use that to our advantage? This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is Still It, and today we're talking about pot stills, specifically the speed that you run them at. You see all over the place on forums and so on and so forth, uh, you've got to run it at a slow drip. It's just, it's, it's got to be going drip, drip. Or no, 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 you've got to run it at a, at a pencil stream. That's, that's the place to run it at. All of these things are kind of talking about the speed that you're running the pot still at, how much energy you're putting into the pot, the vapor speed moving through the pot still. That's what all these things are talking about. And to be honest, looking at the, the speed of offtake is a really easy way to judge this. But every now and again, I see an argument to the opposite side of this, saying essentially that a liquid is going to boil at the temperature it's going to boil at. There's nothing you can do to change that. So running it faster or slower isn't going to change the ABV of the product coming off the still. So today we're going to do a super basic test just to show exactly what does happen when we change the speed of a pot still. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use the most basic pot still I have, which is the T500 with the Alembic. Dome. I filled it up with 8 litres of 38% ABV spirit and I just plugged the thing into the wall. For those of you that have used a T500 before, you know that there is absolutely no way you can adjust the amount of power uh, going into the pot still with the T500 itself. So that thing is running full tilt. So this thermometer has been uh, sitting in here for about a minute and a half, two minutes now, and it's been steady at 22 degrees Celsius. I'll keep it on screen so you guys can see that uh, while I'm talking. But obviously, uh, with anything like this, it's smart to take temperature and adjust using tables or a calculation or whatever it is you want to use, because uh, temperature will affect the density of the liquid, obviously. Because we're running the still at two different speeds, I'm guessing that the two different samples are going to be at slightly different temperatures. That would make sense, right? So this is exactly 80 according to the hydrometer and 22 degrees Celsius. And this is the first sample, the one that we ran hard and fast. I want to bring in today's guest, today's uh, phone a friend that I've got, today's uh, Soren. Today's Soren is Soren from 1919 Distilling. Why are we talking to Soren? Well, for starters, he's just a wonderful human being. Uh, second of all, he runs a commercial distillery up in Auckland that makes some top-notch spirits. And number three, he's just finished building himself a dirty great big pot stool. He's been doing a lot of testing on it, obviously. He's trying to get that thing into production. Seemed like a smart guy to talk to. And we get to get some uh, nice little sexy videos of the new still as well. All of the range that you get in a pot still based on the amount of energy you're putting into the pot is essentially coming from the interaction of vapor and condensed liquid. Yeah, I kind of think like that's your, your primary interaction. So you, you've got a volume of liquid and you need to boil that volume of liquid. If you've got something for it to condense on, that's going to help cool it down. So the, the more power you put in, the more vapor you're going to create. So even though you still might get the same amount condensing, you're still going to be putting more vapor through. So it's going to come out faster out the other end. But if you reduce the amount of energy put in, you are going to be able to create less vapor. So the vapor that is rising is going to rise slower. It's going to condense more and there's going to be less vapor coming out the end as spirit. And because there is less, it's had to work harder, it's condensed more, it's going to be cleaner. Yeah, so it's it's essentially all about the, the ratio of how much vapor is condensing and falling back down and how much is going all the way through past the point of no return. You know, the whole point of this conversation or this debate is does increasing the power make a difference to the ABV or the outcome of your pot still? So if I want to increase that reaction time, I can switch off half of the elements. So we've the way we've wired up our still is we've got it split into six different zones. Each of those zones are four kilowatts um, feeding in. So I can control the, the heating quite precisely. So if I want to slow down that spirit, I want to give it more reaction time, more time with that copper. If I kill half of the power, while I've still got the same amount of boiling surface area, I've still got half the amount of energy going in. You know, we're 1800 liters. 
if we put half the amount of energy in, that vapor is going to rise a lot slower. It's going to take a lot more heat to boil that alcohol. So that vapor is going to move slower throughout the still and have more reaction time with the copper um, as, a, as a, a beneficial consequence or a negative one, depending how you look at it, that will increase your ABV. So now we know the theory of why this might in practice affect the ABV of the product coming off the still. Let's do it for real and see what actually happens. So all of this sample that I collected for the first time, I've uh, taken the measurements on it and recorded those. We're gonna throw all of that back into the still. No, I'm not measuring it all to be exactly eight liters again. No, I'm not measuring it exactly to be the same ABV. Uh, we've just taken all of it and put it back in assuming that that's gonna be pretty close. If it's not close, uh, we are going to be losing alcohol, not gaining it. We can't be more than 100% efficient with this. And if it has a slightly lower ABV in the pot, that is going to push these two things together. We're expecting that the second run is going to be at a higher ABV. If we've slightly lowered the ABV and we still get a higher ABV, we know we're golden. I'm not that worried about it. <laughs> so everything goes back into the pot. We heat the pot back up again. But this time, instead of plugging it directly into the wall, uh, we're playing it into my little power regulator and we're running roughly at about half power. I can't tell you exactly because I've got nothing hooked up to tell you exactly uh, the current of voltage going through that thing. Uh, but I pretty much just ran it visually, slowly crept the power up uh, until it started producing it, just a drip. And we're going to collect the same amount of spirit, 200 mils, measure it, take the temperature and uh, see where we stand. All right team, our second sample, the one that I ran much, much slower, is ready. And it doesn't seem like much of a big difference right now. It is only reading 82% ABV. But keep in mind we haven't taken the temperature yet. Uh, what have we got here? Waiting, waiting, waiting. Just giving, a, just giving it a sec to get a true reading. All right, 16 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's going to change things. All right team, so by my calculations, these are the adjusted numbers that we should be looking at. The first run we did much, much faster. We ended up with 80% ABV as per the alchemeter at 22 degrees Celsius, which comes out to 79% ABV. On the other side, we have the sample that we ran much slower. This one came out with an ABV of 82% ABV at 16 degrees Celsius and adjusted that ended up being 83.5 degrees Celsius. Now you might be saying to yourself that's not a huge difference between the two of these and yeah I, I can kind of agree with you but it is a difference right? You do need to take into consideration and remember that the Alembic pot dome by Still Spirits is quite a basic pot still shape. There's not any additional surface anywhere or any great height off the still that's really going to lend itself to more vapor and liquid interaction. There's really nothing different happening here compared to a reflux still, is there? Yeah, so I mean the overall concept and the overall principle is the same. I mean I could make a, a pot still that would make 95% alcohol all day long. My neck on it might just need to be 32 meters tall. I mean I could still say it's a pot still is just with a really tall neck. I mean, yeah. and you have still, to run it real slow. <laughs> yeah, there's still stills in Scotland that have tall necks. Um, the only difference is when you, you know, you switch to a column still or a hybrid still, then you're, you're adding in an artificial influence or you're increasing that copper contact area to help 
you know, increase that ABV. So it's all about trying to slow down that vapor, condense that vapor. So depending on the design of your still, uh, a lot of stills, a lot of pot stills have the onions in the neck. And the whole point of that onion is increase that surface area. So you're doubling the surface area. You're creating more space for that alcohol to cool down, which is going to give you an increase in ABV. Once the still is running, you can pretty much assume that the entire inside surface area of the still is covered in liquid. If the surface area is greater, you're going to have more interaction between vapor and liquid, and you're going to have a, a cleaner, slightly higher proof spirit. So I feel like now we can pretty comfortably say that yes, running your pot still slower, turning the power down, turning the gas down, putting less energy into the pot, however you want to talk about it, all of those things are pretty much the same thing. If you do that, yes, you are going to get a different product coming out the end of your still. Yes, it is going to change the ABV. And that is going to be more or less influential depending on the shape of your pot still. But why on earth should you care? Why would you want to mess with this? Why is this even worth talking about for a distiller? We're going to talk about that in just a second with Soren again. But I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons. I get to do this stuff because of you and I don't know man I feel like the luckiest guy ever <laughs> so thank you thank you so much Patreons for our stripping one we run it as fast as we can we put as much power as we've got into it um, run it as hard as we want for our spirit run uh, depending on the spirit profile we want to make we will reduce the power um, that's going to give uh, the effect of more sort of artificial reflux and help us achieve a higher proof so when we're stripping we can bring out sort of anywhere from 40% ABV. Uh, when we're doing a spirit run, depending on how much power we put in there, we can bring anywhere out from 60% ABV all the way up to 80% ABV. This is, it's almost like an artistic decision for you at that point in time, the speed that you want to run it at. Being a pot still, we are definitely trying to create a, a pot still style spirit, so full of body, full of flavor. But just because I'm creating a, a pot still rum is what we're running at the moment doesn't mean I necessarily want it to be quite a low ABV, full of heaps of flavor. Um, you're going to get more of those oils coming through. So the last run we did, um, one of my goals was to sort of get that ABV as high as possible. So heated it all up, got it all running, started coming off at 70% alcohol uh, by volume and wanted to see if I could get it a bit higher, clean it up just a little bit, get those heads through a bit earlier on. So ended up dropping the power by 50%. And I was able to raise the, the ABV by 10%. Then sort of depending how we go throughout the run, once we get through all of our heads, we might speed up the run a little bit. So we'll increase the power again, help drive through that section of the hearts for then reducing the power once we get to the tails, um, which means we can pull out a little bit more of the hearts. Again, that ABV is going to rise a little bit. It's going to give us a bit of a cleaner product, separate those tails out before we end up um, shutting it down or, I guess, stop collecting the, the desired product we want. Yeah, cool. So you've got this constant sort of balancing act between speed and efficiency, between the, the flavor profile that's coming off and the end ABV you're going to end up in terms of what's going into the barrels and the, the, the proof that you're going to be maturating at. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's all well and true and wonderful if you say you've got a pot still, and my pot still comes out at 50% ABV. I finish my, my uh, heart's 40% ABV. Um, while the product might taste great, it's, you can still barrel it at that strength, but depending on the barrel strength you go into, you're going to extract different vanillas, different caramels, different tannins. So you might want to barrel at 65% ABV. You might want to barrel at 50 or 40, depending what you're trying to extract. So we kind of need that ability to, to pull out a higher ABV as well as a lower ABV. If people want to track down your products and check them out, where should they find you, man? Best space, uh, place is our website, which is 1919distilling.com. We are available in New Zealand and Australia um, with another country coming on board shortly. Ooh. But if you're in New Zealand, hit up uh, Glen Gary's Liquorland uh, or any good liquor store and ask for us by name. If you're in Australia, uh, Booze Bud or Dan Murphy's online have you covered. Thanks a bunch, Soren. I appreciate it, my dude. If you're in New Zealand or Australia and you can get your hands on a bottle of his product, I can personally 100% vouch for the fact that it is damn good stuff. So it's worth picking up. It's worth giving it a taste. And it's worth supporting a cool dude like that who's happy to, you know, give back to the community. 
in the way he does. Pretty awesome. Anyway, I hope this video has perhaps uh, given you a little bit more of an idea on why or how you might want to influence the ABV of your product coming off a pot still, the reasons to do that. Uh, and maybe, just maybe, if you were one of the people that was kind of thinking, I mean, there's no way this can actually do something, maybe this helped you out and uh, gave you a little bit of a reason to think and understand that it totally does. Anyway, team, if you enjoyed this video, uh, help me out. Hit the like button down below. YouTube loves that shit. It helps me out a whole bunch. I would appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed yet and you enjoy this kind of content and you want more popping up in your feed, hit the subscribe button as well. And, and, I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.